So my name is Siraj, and uh, thank you very much for coming to my talk and workshop. And so for those of you who are uh, curious about the format, it'll be about maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes of uh, conversations and uh, quick question answer sessions. And then after that, it's all exercises. We'll close about five minutes before to do like a debrief about what we learned, okay? So uh, the kind of work I do is called uh, containering, and I will explain that. It comes from a Greek word called temenos. Temenos is an island far away from the Greek land where the Greek gods would go for their personal transformation. So the work we do is primarily with executives and leaders who are in a state of personal transformation while their organization is going through enterprise or even agile transformation. And so when we work with them, we are basically trying to improve their temeno skills, or what we call as their ability to do containering. And I will show that in a few minutes. All right, next slide, please. In a nutshell, what I've learned uh, in about 25 years of working with maybe about 2,500 executives and leaders across the world is that unless there is a sense of personal accountability and responsibility, the leader will not step up. There is, there is enough space, mechanism, and excuses for a leader to hide himself or herself in an organization. Basically, an organization poses two life challenges to a leader, either step up or hide. And the Temenos work is about bringing this person out from hiding into the light. Okay, and so we'll see how that happens. But before that, I love this quote by uh, Voltaire. What he says is, no snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. And believe me, most of the agile transformations that I've seen uh, everywhere, but especially in India and Asia Pacific, have this quality from the leaders. No one really wants to step up and say that this is mine. And if something goes wrong, this is my fault. So uh, get ready for this. This is one of the exercises we'll play. It's a very interesting exercise that I play with all my executives. So you'll get an experience of that. Next slide, please. How does it start? Right? So there has to be a start for all these executives. Okay? And among all the pictures and slides and everything that I took, I think this represents the start the best. This is the baby leader. This is your boss. Maybe this is you. Uh, or maybe this is the owner of your company or the CEO or whatever, he or she loves to play with large animals, large systems, or what we call as large containers. That's the first thing we get when we study these leaders. And you'll see how we study the leaders. So we have a profile of about 2,500 leaders now. And when we study them, what we find is that in their childhood, they didn't like to play with small things. They like to play with big things. This is the relationship that they establish. And when they begin, they begin as children who know how to play with these large systems. They have a lot of talent, and it's all natural, and what we call as innate. They don't need to be taught how to play with large systems. And then something goes wrong. Something goes wrong. And it's possible it's uh, nature, nurture, uh, competition, greed whatever, but this is the state we find them in. Almost every leader that I've worked with before transformation is in this state. There is an external shell that's very strong and courageous, but inside, this is the leader that I work with. This is the human being that I work with. Basically, they know that they have messed up the system and that the system has messed them up. The relationship between the leader and the temenos is what we call unclean. And so we help them in cleaning this relationship through another exercise that's called the clean slate exercise. We'll try to do three exercises today if possible. Right? So, so I'm going like straight into the situation now. Right? The leader is suffering. That's really who he is. You might have worked with the leaders, and you might find that they're not responsible, they're not stepping up, they're arrogant or whatever,
but inside these human beings are just like you and me and they are suffering they are suffering of multiple uh, uh, you know ills and diseases but one of the biggest one is guilt and that's because they have seen themselves in a vision where they are able to work with the large system when they are not able to uh, match their vision and their dream it produces much more guilt than anything else right all right next slide please and what we have found is that for a leader to be a good uh, servant leader and a good agile transformation sponsor they actually have to go through that you know uh, rich sheridan talks about how he broke his heart and then created joy inc right every leader goes through that it's that it's that depth that they go through they find themselves and then they come up when they come up they come into a state that we call yugen it's a state that they can only experience inside but they cannot share it with you they know it but they don't know how to say it when we meet leaders we wait until they find yugen this is the state of readiness of leaders that you can work with if the leaders don't have yugen you can bring any methodology you want you can bring the best um, leadership coaches and enterprise coaches until they are ready they will not be uh, in a state to work with you and we find that agile brings about yugen for all the leaders it's a faster way of bringing them into their own personal transformation and that's really the beauty of uh, i think where we are we find agile as an excuse for personal transformation agile is the reason for the personal consciousness hi guys for the personal consciousness and the personal transformation of leaders i want to introduce ellen here ellen was actually in my first talk about this in 2010 thank you ellen you're back here after 6 years right so so these leaders right they go about doing things okay and it looks like they are intentional and they have a direction and they know where they want to take their lives but my experience tells me they don't know what they do know and what they are doing subconsciously is going towards you guys they are subconsciously doing things working in companies job hopping going to classes falling in love having kids whatever making mistakes making companies profitable and bankrupt but it seems the real purpose of this activity is to make them face themselves and experience yugen next slide it's through yugen that we find the good leaders begin to understand what is their role and their role is to offer supplication right so this is the same picture you can imagine those big cows and the bulls that i showed and that's the leader but the stance of the leader is completely different if you remember in the other picture the first one the kid was facing the cow in the second one the man and the bull fighter you know he is uh, in a state of regret and guilt but it's the third step after yugen of being in supplication that the leader really understands how to work with the tamanos it takes these three stages of life and and of experience it's when they come to this state of yugen and then supplication is when we can work with them because now the leader has started doing what we call as containering okay so if susan and others can draw the same diagram in other places so this is the leader okay they've gone through those three stages that i described now they are beginning to do what we call as building containers that's the maturity of leaders we are looking for you know the best leaders they can create the largest containers you know like when you say this leader has gravitas presence and charisma it basically means that this leader can build a virtual container that goes all the way around so we look for two things okay we look for the shape of containering okay and we look for the pace of containering a good leader who is mature he can build or she can build a container a virtual container around this entire room so that's the shape and build it fast that's the pace those are the two skills we are looking for when we select like you know most companies come to us 
to help them select agile transformation sponsors, right? So we interview a bunch of people. And this is what we are looking for. How quickly can you fall down? How quickly can you experience Yugen and understand that your role is supplication and the way you're going to offer supplication is through containerism. So we put them in various situations, you know, and it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a release planning, you know, demo, retro, daily stand-up, whatever. What we want to see is how you build the container, that's the shape, and how fast you build it. That's the key. Good leaders are able to include everyone in their container, right? So now, good leaders are about inclusion and exclusion. So we watch out for that. Those leaders who have this tendency to exclude people, they are still immature in their containering practices. We would not recommend them. Those leaders who are really open to everyone and are able to build that container all the way abroad, right? In order to do that, we have found the secret. The leaders have to begin their sentence with, it's my fault. It's magical, it's magic. And I'm going to give two examples of leaders, actually one example of one leader and one example of a whole uh, set of leaders who essentially started the day with, it's my fault that this is broken. You know, When they own it, the container expands. When they're able to say it, the pace of the container goes faster, all right? Let's see some examples. Next slide, please. This is our basic vision and agility model. We want to understand every leader and every change agent in the company. So that's all the individuals around. That's our vision lab process through which we uh, study individuals and change agents and then come out and understand what is their vision and what is their continuing ability. Next slide, please. Okay. All the leaders we work with work in a context of an enterprise that is changing. So we do not walk into a company and say that we will transform you. Our approach basically is called approaching the transforming enterprise because the company and the enterprise that we are working with is already transforming. We are going to participate in their transformation. So when we work with them, we basically tell them that our job as uh, Temenos facilitators is to help your organization eat agile. Mark those words. Because every organization that we've worked with over a long term, maybe 10 years or so, basically um, takes agile, breaks it up, eats a few pieces of it, and then throws the other parts. After some time, it's no longer agile, it's called the enterprise way. So that's what we help them do, and the way we help them do that is through these executives. Okay, next slide please. So here is an example of a leader who I would say uh, probably created the best transformation at an enterprise level that I've seen. His name is Mike Long. I met him in 2012 when he was the transformation champion of a relatively mid-sized division of maybe about 3,000 people at a bank, Capital One. Ellen also worked there. And he and I got into this coaching relationship and basically I was mentoring him as he was growing in the organization. And his challenge was he had not experienced Yugen yet. He was just one step before. And he needed someone to push him gently into Yugen, but then he also needed someone to catch him when he falls. Do you understand that? Right? So if you are aspiring to be a leadership uh, mentor or a leadership coach, then you got a sense, is this person going to jump or do I need to push? Regardless of what decision you take, you have to be at the bottom to catch. It's another uh, human being that's falling, right? When you catch is when you can lift, right? Please remember that, you know, because you're dealing with another compassionate human being who's got a lot of ideas, but is looking for the right spark, and maybe that right spark is you, right? So luckily for me, I found uh, myself to be in a very good place with Mike, and I was able to offer him supplication and these tools of continuing, and he was ready to lap it up once he had his first failure. Eventually, he ended up launching you know, several divisions into Agile. He became the head of Agile transformation for this bank and then went on to do great things. We are still great friends. I've got a lot of people who are good friends at Capital One, and I think they're doing good things. Um, but I think the, the lesson he taught me was you know, how easy it is to get into Yugen 
and then supplication, and then begin your uh, meeting with, it's my fault. It was classic. When he started doing that, everyone in his team started doing that. So when, you know, his, a lot of his people are here, you can see that. You can see Susan Gibson over there. You can see some of these people. Where is my, uh, Matt, I was talking to you about people from HSBC. He's gone? He's there? There are some people from HSBC there because Capital One had just bought HSBC at that time. So all these people, you know, they're trying to learn how we can work with each other in a state of yugen and supplication. So we began teaching them these continuing skills and it was just a remarkable experience for us. Okay, next slide please. As I said, I'm just gonna give a little bit of uh, uh, ideas to you and then we'll do some exercises, okay? All right, this is a small company which is now worth more than I'd say about 200 million, it's LeanKid. I started working with the leadership team of LeanKid when there were these four people, exactly these four. So I took them through all those processes that I was describing earlier and then help them to build these uh, continuing skills. And again, the same thing. It's my fault. It's like a magical uh, mantra that just opens up people's hearts and makes them compassionate towards them. We'll talk more during the Q&A, but next slide, please. All right. Are we ready for the first exercise, or do you have any questions? Questions or exercise? Yes. Just say your name and be loud, because there are a lot of people here. Hello. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've seen cases like this, and basically when an, a leader comes into this state, right? So this is the state before you get, right? They've done amazing work, but they have complete despair, okay? They take two paths. The best leaders go into the path that we are describing, which is Yugen, supplication, and then continuity. The other leaders do what you're doing, which is I want to push back away from this. I don't believe this is my state. I believe, I believe this is my state. And they go back into a life of comfort. The magic happens in discomfort. The magic happens when they go into this, when the bullfighter becomes the bull, is when he and the bull can play with each other and not hurt each other, but just enjoy the game. So most executives that I work with are problem makers. We call them anomalies and change agents. But it's how they channel that problem and that energy of the problem. Right? Okay, one more question and then we'll do some exercises. Anyone? No? Last chance? Okay, good. All right. So what I said was the skill we are going to acquire is the skill of continuing. Okay? So you're an individual leader and you're going to start practicing how to build your containering skills. You're focusing only on two things right now. The shape of your container, okay, that's as, as broad as you can go, and if not, reduce the scope, okay? Know your presence, know your gravitas, okay? The second is pace. Why pace? Because we're in an enterprise. It's big, it's large, and it's going to happen right in front of you, okay? So in order to do the containering exercises, we'll do two right now, and then if possible, we'll do three, you got to look at the next exercise. If you could just go back to the exercise. Next one, next one. Next one, next one. Next one, next one. Next. Yeah, all right. So Rumi said, sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment. Okay? That's what good leaders do. That's how they build their container. In order to build your container, you got to let go of something, and then you got to acquire new skills. So I will break down how we do it. It need not be how you'll do it later on. But for the purpose of exercise, the way you buy bewilderment is you do three things. 
you acknowledge, you appreciate, and then you admire whatever container you are. All right? That's when you can start to begin building the container. You cannot build a container if you don't admire where you are, or appreciate, or acknowledge. So for those of you who are looking to improve your skills as an executive leader, it's important to really fall in love with that container, to fall in love with that enterprise. Okay. So you have a table facilitator in every table who's going to help you with this. We'll time it uh, maybe, you know, if uh, there's someone who's timing in the back, you know, maybe about five minutes initially, all right? So there are three steps. Acknowledge, appreciate, and admire, okay? Easy, is the, is the exercise easy? All right, so now the way you're going to do it is three steps. Introspect, visualize, and articulate. There are a lot of pads and pens in front of you. You're going to talk about your uh, home container, whichever one you take. That's the container you want to change. If you are an executive, then take your company. But if you're more interested in personal life, then take your personal. That's your, your basic context or the container. Then you're going to introspect on two or three things. What is it about my container that I want to acknowledge, appreciate, and admire? Okay? And then you're going to articulate within your table. It's a table exercise so that it's you know intimate and small. Introduce yourself, say hello, you have a facilitator on your table to help you, and we'll give you five minutes. If you need more, we'll come back to you. All right, let's go. All right, sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment. Let's go. For the room and five minutes for the briefing. Good, good. You do that. The why is basically to help people. Okay, and the how is to like really listen to their questions and then help them. At least you're getting the truth. Don't kill yourselves after this class. All right. So who wants to present? I have one one nice case here. You want to present? Okay, listen, what is your name, please? My name is Vivek. Vivek, okay, let's listen to Vivek. So, I mean, talking to me, yeah. because I have a nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, I look. Come close. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I look at my, uh, my company as a sun, uh, which is trying to grow, uh, which is trying to come up. But there are mountains in front of it, which is why you can't see a lot of things from the sun, and you can't see the light. And there are clouds as well, uh, which feel the sunlight coming to you. I mean, both that the sun is coming up uh, because one day it will come up and we see after once the, the clouds are over and once it's up, up, up above the hill. That's why I see. I mean, I admire that it will come up one day or maybe today. All right. I'll also uh, share with you his picture, and you can come and see this. Uh, that's the reason why we have those three steps. I said introspection, visualization, and articulation. Every good container creator is a visualizer. Remember, I was asking you about your drawings, right? Every good leader knows that he or she will not be able to communicate the full picture by words. There has to be a visualization. All these guys, examples that I showed you, Mike Long, he would draw all the time. You know, most of his presentations were scribbly doodles and things like that. Look at this, some funny cloud and you know, mountains. Great work. Please give him a hand. Okay. Do we have one person there? Who wants to show off? Oh my God. Okay, come on, let's see. We'll do one or two more, okay, because we got to go to the next one. Yeah. 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 Very good. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So the best leaders that I know, they talk to their organization. Believe it or not, they talk to their organization 
when they have experience with Eugen's application and continuing, they are able to have a dialogue with the enterprise. And the dialogue, the first part of the dialogue is this one. You are beautiful. I admire you. And then the next part is the one that we will go to. It's a very, very beautiful and gentle exercise. So if you're able to play, then play. And if you're not, then just relax and watch. Okay. Next slide. So the next exercise is basically uh, something that some leaders play and some leaders don't play. It depends upon the amount of depth of their personal transformation. Okay? We call it the snowflake exercise. So what you're going to do is, again, in the same container, and again, with that same container that you admire. That's the relationship. There has to be admiration for this exercise to work with you. You're going to, again, do the same three things, introspection, visualization, and articulation. When you articulate, you'll have to draw a picture if you can. When you articulate, your sentence should begin like this. It's my fault. And then something. Okay? Like in this case, you know, you might come up with, it's my fault that the organization has still got these clouds over it. We still have all these challenges that we've been talking about for 10 years, and it's my fault. You got it? Easy? Right? All right. Five minutes now. Please be gentle on yourselves when you do this. It's a, you know, it's like a retrospective for self. Okay? All right. Let's do it. And then if we have time, we'll do the third exercise. Come on, please. Let's go. One sec, please. Before I go into the presentation, two uh, things to caution you if you're going to do this exercise on your own without training with one of us. First one, if someone is saying it's my fault, be gentle. Don't allow people to say, yes, it is. <laughs> OK. So just be careful with that. And then the second one, it's this is the more dangerous one. Don't do, it's your fault. That's not this exercise. Everyone can do that, you know, blame culture. You know, that's the anti-agile. In agile, we share the responsibility for whatever is not working. Okay, so just, uh, and then be gentle on yourself. Okay, I have one or two volunteers. Would you like to come, Alo? Okay, come into me again. Come. Okay, close. So, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, should I go ahead? If you want. Okay. So it's my fault that uh, I did not get on the change bandwagon early on, uh, even when I experienced it before in other companies. So I knew how change happens. But then you know, I was willing for, I was waiting for the big bang thing, you know. Let's bring out the bigger change. Uh, and and I, so what I did is, you know, I started taking small steps. And then I was able to break the barrier or the blockers which were stopping me from this change. So now it's a new reality, new world. So this is my drawing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Do we have any more volunteers? Who? Ajay Rishi, come on. So, so um, I have a picture of a person who is standing on a cliff and he's trying to jump on a higher cliff. And the uh, text which goes with it is, uh, it's my fault. I was slow in noticing the change. The nature of work my team was being asked to do. Um, and I continue to use my old ways of working to solve a very different new age issue and cause development work which my team was now being asked to do. Um, in, in that whole process, I think uh, I have led to uh, a lot of burnouts and a lot of slowness from my organization. Which I could have noticed earlier as a great impact. Thank you. Please give him a hand. It takes cu courage to do these things. Okay, do we have another volunteer on this side? Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Let's go fast. You have a picture? Um, so I would say it's my fault that a lot of liberty was misused as a privilege, a de facto privilege. 
that uh, I have ended up in a highly bureaucratic environment. So the picture here it says like I've been throwing garbage all around, and now you have put so much of policemen around one person that it becomes so difficult to even do simple stuff. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Last volunteer, come on, come on. Good to get volunteers. So it was some some unknowns and assumptions were always there. So I I have planned all the things, release and all those things, but. As we know that resources are like not, we cannot define so, so they ask for vacations and all those things. So for that, the project has to suffer. So that is the one thing I noted down. And the next project, I made the list and added on that thing. Good. Thanks a lot. All right. This will take you exactly two minutes, right? After you've done your admiration and the ownership of the problem, you can now ask for permission. Good leaders, as I said, they talk to the enterprise. They ask for permission before doing the change. Right? So come on. It'll take you two minutes to write down. Please give me permission to. Then you can define it. OK, come on, let's go. You already did it. Oh. OK, just two minutes. We don't have enough time. Yes, my dear. One sec, one sec, one sec. Yes, please. Sure, sure. Yeah. Which is asking for permission in a different way. Okay, let's do it. And then I'll take one or two volunteers for this exercise. All right, let's stop. Who's got an example? You ready? OK, please just introduce yourself and uh, give your permission uh, example. No, 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 I'll keep it. <laughs> Too many people. All right, so I'm Abhishek Mansa. I'm from Fidelity. So I'm putting across, I will state the, both the statements, yeah. uh, because those goes hands in yeah. hand. Yeah. So it's my fault that even after trying my level best, the team still is struggling to adopt complete agile. And I request your permission and support to guide your best, better, and work with you to the next steps. Whoa! <laughs> Fantastic. Who's next? Yeah, just pass the mic, please. Ajay Ramesh, come on. Let's do it. We start with the fault part. Yeah. Um, uh, it was my fault uh, that we did not set expectation f uh, with our customers right up front. And uh, I started pro working on projects uh, as per the contractual agreements. Um, now, I need your permission to bring a change wherein uh, we adopt more of agility uh, all across throughout the ecosystem where our contracts, our work, uh, and se uh, expectation setting is upfront with the customer and also our in internal teams so that we can do better job for our customers with higher value delivery and satisfaction. Thanks a lot, Ramesh. <laughs> Great. Those are the three exercises. One is the admiration exercise. Second is the exercise to uh, declare yourself in, in a state of fault. And then the third one is to ask permission. All right? That's all that we have. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah, come on, Alok. Mistakes and uh, permission part. You know, uh, I've done it a few times already. I gave this example over here. This was the entire leadership team, and then the previous one was I just gave the leader, but I did with his whole team. Um, people are always ready to confess if you provide them a safe container. And if you are that change agent who's facilitating, it depends a lot on you. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to admit your fault? Are you ready to ask for permission? So you know, the quality of enterprise transformation will always be as good as the quality of the change agent. 
if you can improve yourself, I bet you you'll be able to take the leadership with yourself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Yeah. So how are you handling that? Uh, not sometimes. You will always get emails. You know, and it's always a state of imbalance because you're always going to fall and then pick yourself up. That's the resiliency factor of Agile. It's true for the company and it's true for the executives. It's true for the leaders. I feel we are very harsh on leaders. We don't give them a chance to fail. We don't give them a benefit of doubt. It's like they're always expected to be perfect, which is impossible. Yes, Rishi. Coming to another question, I'm sure you yeah. think about that. I mean, at least the larger the organization, the leaders at the top have an extremely political construct, which is extremely cutthroat. Um, so while I think somebody accepting his, his fall and coming out and, and saying, I want to make this change, yeah. how many organizations' ecosystem do you think will support it? Um, because currently, the biggest issue which I see, I currently work with an organization where we have I, I like those leaders. I think they have done extremely good job to reach where they are. But they just, and even when they know what errors they are making, it's very difficult for them to come out and open and say, okay, I have made this mistake or I would like to correct this. Because the political construct, the, the whole ecosystem would not let them do that. Yeah, but you just saw an example of multiple people saying it's my fault. And we, I just gave you an example of one person and a small team. But we actually work with the whole company. And we get the whole company to do this. You know, in one company, we used to call it it's my fault Friday. You meet on a Friday, you know, in an agile team, you basically do a retrospective every week or two weeks or whatever. This is how we begin. It's my fault that this happened. And then we clap, we celebrate the lessons learned and move to the next one, right? Where, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That you come and say, it's my fault. It might backfire on you. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, all these uh, exercises that I would call as high risk, high return, all these exercises are basically high risk, high return. All the agile coaching, I would call it as medium risk, medium return, or low risk, low return. So if you want to up your game as an agile coach and an executive coach, you got to move into high risk, high return zone. And then before you do the exercise like this one, you got to neutralize the risk. And that's what I said, like for the it's my fault exercise, there are two things to watch out for. One is it's your fault, and yes, it is your fault, right? So watch out for that. So you've got to prepare the work. You can't just go and do something like this. You know, you've got to go prepare, interview, and study the people, and then decide if the organization is ready for this or not, all right? Okay, maybe one or two questions, or last, last, okay. Yeah, great. Hello. Yeah, this workshop is uh, about uh, organization leader yeah. and where they can take risk and or they can appreciate and admire and yeah. take the fault. But uh, will it be applicable for whole company, yeah. each in employee? That yeah, yeah. how it will be contributing to the organization change, transformation, and uh, uh, tr uh, all altogether transformation. Means because sing single uh, means person who is working at very low uh, profile job how we can uh, uh, co contribute to the transformation changes in, within our organization. Yeah, that's a great yeah. question because as you go into the team level of the organization, you know, I find that while agile practices are there, basic empowerment and basic uh, you know, ability to take decisions is not there. And I've especially found that in the teams that are offshore, the, the sort of like the control and the ownership is outside of the team and the doing and the execution and even the failing is inside the team over here. So I think your question is very difficult. It will require some really good uh, change agents to come and transfer power in a very explicit kind of a way, saying that we are now moving to self-empowered teams, self-organizing and self-managing teams that know how to take decisions and may make risks and may make mistakes. It's a long journey that we are asking for. You know. Here we are focused more on leaders who know how to give, you know, and who know how to let go of power. This is the beginning. That's probably the middle of where you want to go. All right? That's it. When you leave, please give us your it's your fault stories on the flip charts. 
Susan, Nelson, and others are there. Thanks a lot. You've been playing very well.